Our first inductee into the WWE Hall of Fame 2024 class will be the only choice for the first inductee into uh, the WWE 2024 Hall of Fame class, and that is the wise man himself. Paul Heyman has officially been announced for this year's class, and huge news coming here from WWE uh, regarding Paul Heyman getting the opportunity. We'll read it right from the screen here. Triple H put out a tweet. It was reported by the Associated Press. Um, and here's what Triple H had to say. Quote, he's been a promoter, a manager, an executive, a wise man, and now a WWE Hall of Famer. There's more to say about at Heyman Hustle, but as always, it's best to let him say it himself with a live microphone in Philadelphia. End quote. So there you have it. Paul Heyman will be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame this year and Look, I mean, we talk about no-brainers, right? Like, this is as easy of a choice as it gets to not just induct Paul Heyman into the Hall of Fame. He was always going to be a Hall of Famer. But if you're going to do it, you got to do it in Philadelphia. And this was one that was been rumored for a while now. If they were going to go this route, they do officially um, do it here. And you just think about everything that has sort of led to this point in Paul Heyman's career uh, of getting into the WWE Hall of Fame now. And kind of where the whole story started, even though, you know, we can go back to the WCW days and all that as a manager and everything. But you think about what ECW did in terms of the wrestling business. And I know there are people out there that will look back at ECW. And sure, there are some things you look back on now that may not age well. Uh, But ECW has had, you know, its hands in sort of a lot of things that, you know, the business has become since that point in the mid-90s. The various periods, whether it is just innovative styles of wrestling, whether it is the more extreme, pun intended, styles of wrestling and all of that. Um, What Paul Heyman created there, you know, like I said, was something that certainly changed the industry in terms of um, everything that it brought to the table and all the new sort of, again, innovative uh, ideas and ways of doing things. It wasn't just what you had saw you know, in the territory days or in the the golden age of the WWF and, you know, the late 80s and all that. It was just a much different presentation, a much different product, and one that, again, certainly had its detractors. But ultimately, it even goes beyond that, right? It's not just what Paul Heyman did uh, by bringing in, you know, ECW, doing what he did there, um, which, again, was not always full of positives. Uh, It certainly was not. But the impact he's had on the business, that you look at everything he's sort of been able to accomplish and all the, I mean, look, if you're, if you had to pick one word to describe Paul Heyman, some people out there may have different words for him. I think it's just creative, right? It's creativity. I think you've seen Paul Heyman in all the different roles that he's had over the years. And I think that's always the one thing that you come back to with him is just creativity. It's a guy that has never been short on ideas. They haven't all been great. uh, Just like anyone, I think who, works in a creative field or tries to be creative, not every idea you have is going to hit. But I think you've just seen the way this guy has embraced the, you know, the the industry of professional wrestling and coming up with all different ideas, whether it is the ECW model of just trying to innovate, trying to be something different, taking it to the extreme, or it is all the little bitty tiny wrinkles that we've seen with his characters over the year as a manager, whether it was as Paul E. Dangerously, you know, back in the day, um, you know, with the Dangerous Alliance, or whether it's the wise man now with Roman Reigns and everything in between. I think you've just seen so many ideas come out of this guy. And, you know, again, not all of them have been perfect. Not all of them have lasted. But you just think about the what he's been able to create ever since he began, you know, as a professional wrestling manager. The, the things that he has kind of put out into the professional wrestling world and what has come of that and how he has impacted the business, uh, whether it is just from a managerial standpoint or, again, whether it's the impact that ECW's had on the business, which I know not everyone would agree on, has always been a positive thing. But nonetheless, he has left you know his, ha- his handprint on this industry, um, you know, unlike few have in that particular way, I think, just given, again, everything that Paul Heyman has done over the years. And, and I even think, like, if you do bring it to the, the present day, think about what this bloodline storyline would look like without a Paul Heyman side-by-side with Roman Reigns. That was one of the most appealing things from the start of this story was not just the fact that, okay, we're finally getting heel Roman Reigns, what everybody had wanted for years, right? wasn't just that. It's that they paired him with Paul Heyman. 
someone who could bring out the very best in Roman Reigns. He could push all those little tiny things that needed to be pushed that maybe Roman Reigns wasn't yet ready to do as a heel. And that has been as big of anything. You think about the entire presentation of the bloodline. You think about everything that Paul Heyman adds as he is just standing to the side, not a central figure in a lot of these particular segments and or promos or anything like that, right? He's not always the central figure, but you're always looking to see what's Paul Heyman doing? What's that facial expression he's going to have? Like whether it's the one, um, you know, where the Rock and Roman Reigns hug and you've got Heyman back there. We just talked about it in a previous video. <laughs> you could even see it kind of, in, you know, in the photo that we have, it's like Heyman's just back there. He's like eyes wide open, mouth wide open, like, oh my God, what have I done here? And I think that's something else that's been a strength of Paul Heyman. His ability to tell a story without even opening his mouth. Although that's one of the best things he's done. And as Triple H said, you're giving Paul Heyman a live microphone in Philadelphia in his Hall of Fame speech. That thing is going to be must-see. There are going to be a lot of things at WrestleMania 40 weekend that are going to be must-see. That may be near the top to hear what Paul Heyman has to say and think about the speech that this guy's going to have. But you just, again, think about what he can do without even saying a word. That is something in professional wrestling I think that you can never undervalue is the ability to tell a story without opening your mouth. It's the ability to do all the things you need to do without saying a word. He just happens to be masterful at both, both when he does say something, when he has a microphone in his hand, and also when he doesn't. It's just the eyes. It's the expressions, like we said. All those things, like there have been few throughout professional wrestling history that have been as good at that as Paul Heyman, and he is right up there. I'm not going to list every single name. I'm just going to mention a couple of them because I know I'm going to you know, leave someone out. I don't want this to turn into an argument about where Paul Heyman should be ranked in terms of the best managers of all time. But if you're talking about guys who have done it at the highest level, whether that's a Bobby Heenan, whether that's a Paul Heyman, a Jim Cornette, guys like that, and again, I know there are many others we can have a longer discussion on, and maybe we will at some point, but it's the little bitty details. It's the ability to understand that those are the things that make or break storylines and particular moments that go down as memorable. It's just the ability to adapt to what the audience is doing, to respond in a way that is going to get that reaction from the audience. Um, and man, you just think about all the ways that Heyman's done that over the years. Um, it's just, it's one of a kind. It's a very unique wrestling career uh, for Paul Heyman. And like I said, rightfully going into the Hall of Fame in a place where he absolutely should be. And and, and I guess we have to think about this, and, and we'll talk more about this in other videos, but I mean, is he the clear headliner for this class of 2024? Maybe he's not. Uh, I would think he it just makes the most sense to me uh, when you look at, again, what he is bringing to the table and the history with Philadelphia and all these things, but no matter what, Paul Heyman uh, deservedly going to be in the WWE Hall of Fame class of 2024. And as I said, that speech, it may go an hour. <laughs> they better give Paul Heyman the time to say anything he wants to say. Maybe not anything, but give him the time to have this speech because it will be one with, we can go ahead and rank in the top five, probably all time Hall of Fame speeches. It may wind up being the best when all is said and done, but Paul Heyman, Hall of Famer. It just makes sense. So let me think about Paul Heyman being inducted into the Hall of Fame class of 2024 in WWE. Uh, leave your comments below. Uh, your favorite moments, perhaps, over the years of the wise man. We'll, we'll probably do something on that, too, closer to the Hall of Fame. But, yeah, uh, a great award for someone who has, again, had just such a huge impact on the business. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button. New channel here. Just enjoy talking professional wrestling with you guys. Uh, and, again, uh, Paul Heyman headed to the Hall of Fame.